April 2nd, 2015. From El Cajon, California, this is episode 69 of You Can Bet on That. Hi everybody, welcome to You Can Bet on That, a podcast for the recreational gambler. My name's Mark Duvall, and sitting next to me is Dr. Mike. Hello. We got an email from uh, listener Fred. He was asking about um, some big payouts. If you get paid like on a big pay- slot payout and some of the consequences of doing that. His question actually stemmed from our fire bet win that we won back in October, where we each had $10 on the fire bet and all six numbers hit, and we right. won $10,000. We got W-2Gs, which are the tax forms that you get when you have a big payout like that. And we were a little surprised that Caesar's Palace, where it happened, withheld 25% of our winnings right then and there. Yeah. They didn't really ask us, do you want to? No. They just did it. And we didn't say anything up front because it was the first time we'd ever won a fire bet. And so we didn't really know what to expect. And a when big we, fire bet. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. All, the, all six numbers yes. fire bet, right. And so, you know, when we got the W2Gs and then they only gave us 7,500 in chips, I was kind of thinking, well, I guess that's just the policy. Yeah, but, why did you flip the pit boss off and stomp away then? Uh, <laughs> really, there's no reason they should have withheld that money. No. Um, no, they had our social security numbers. Right. And then it's up to you to declare it on your taxes. Right. And if you don't, you know, you have to deal with the IRS. Why should the casino be involved in collecting taxes? Yeah. And if you cannot provide a social security number for them, right. then, then they, they might. They have to, right. right, under law, withhold. I think it's like 28% they have to withhold. But they had our, our numbers. So I'm thinking that up front we could have said, hey, don't deduct anything. Yeah. You know, we'll take the full amount. That might have been on us. It, I mean, it's it, very might, it might have been yeah. that we were supposed to say something yeah. and we didn't know it. Or it just could be the federal government's way of making sure that, you know, we get out of this trillions of dollars of debt. Yeah, I don't I don't think so. Fire yeah. bets. I don't think yeah, <laughs> they're going to start requiring it. No <laughs> sports betting in states, but, you know. Craps and fire bets are legal. Yeah. I mean, you're, like you said, it all comes out in the wash, right, when you do your taxes. But I wish we kind of had said something up front. I know yeah. that when you win the fire bet here at Harris by us, uh, it's only a $5 maximum bet. So the most you can win is 5000 and they never take that yeah. out. So, well, anything over twelve hundred, you would think would be the same, right? Whether it's five thousand, ten thousand, or a hundred, right? 000, yeah, I right? mean, you've got to get a W two G if it's over, right. you know, twelve hundred or over. But yeah, as far as the deduction goes, so who, you know, we. Well, I'll tell you what. Next time we're at Caesars, either one of us, let's. I'm going to just ask. Oh yeah, definitely. And just say, you know, what's the deal? Can I opt not to, you know, ask a pit guy? Can can I just not have taxes taken out? Yeah, that's a good question. Even if we're we haven't won the fire bet, just to find out just what they say. Just to find out, no. Yeah. And then I'm gonna tell him, you know, start filling out the form because I'm gonna roll <laughs> the fire bet here. Yeah, yeah. And Fred then was also asking if you win, you know, a big bet at the craps table and they pay you in chips, can you then go to the cashier and ask for a check instead of cash? And yes, you can. And typically, they'll give it to you. Uh, some casinos probably have a minimum. Oh, I'm sure for most a check, of them do. You know, otherwise yeah. people would be asking for checks yeah, all the time, right? Be crazy it's people. Probably like five thousand or more. Although Fred actually said that um, he got a slot payout once that was around four thousand, and he asked for a check, and they did give it to him. Yeah. So, well, you could see that. I mean, sure. especially I think it's even more important here in local casinos because there could be someone watching you, following you home or mm-hmm. something. And if you get a check. <laughs> They're not going to follow you home. Right. Right. <laughs> well, he might still follow you home, but then you just flash the check and, yeah. okay, yeah. thanks anyway. <laughs> yeah. they, they put their gun away and drive <laughs> right. off. They put their gun away and drive off. Yeah. You have to buy a McDonald's or yeah. something. That's it. <laughs> that's <right. laughs> now, you wanted to talk about coffee shops because on our one of our drives. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Yeah. Um, let me go back just a little sure, bit. Sure, go ahead. I want to tell you this. Uh, I didn't tell you this. My brother... Just got back on um, Monday from Kansas City. He went to the Harris in Kansas City. And we'll, we'll talk about that a little later. But he had an interesting thing happen to him on Monday morning. He was down a little bit for the trip, not much. But he got up early and he went and played some slots. And he ended up hitting a few like bonus spin things on mm-hmm. the machine. Right. Where he ended up with about $3,800. Okay. He'd put 100 bucks in. Yeah. So he was up. So when he got the first bonus thing, it rang up and it went over 1200 bucks on the machine. 
and the machine just automatically printed him a ticket for like eleven ninety nine. Oh, and left the rest of the money in the machine. Oh, okay, right. So he took that ticket. Yeah. Okay, and then he ended up hitting another bonus thing, and I guess this one was bigger, and a light went off, and the machine wouldn't work. And, you know, he finally, he said it took a while. Finally, somebody came by. He was trying to flag somebody down. And he said, oh, that's, this is going to have to be a, uh, hand a pay. Hand pay. Mm-hmm. So he waited and waited. And finally, a lady came over and she hand paid him. She wrote him a check from the casino, right? For eleven ninety nine. Okay. Again. Uh huh. And left more money in there. And then he played through it and then ended up cashing out. Anyway, he ended up clearing like, like 3800 bucks or something but they worked it so they never had to give him a w2g nice okay yeah now that's great well it's great for the player and the casino they don't right. they don't like they, doing all that right. paperwork. they don't have to do all that paperwork and they just and really it's probably not illegal because it's like well just give me 11.99 i'm gonna play the rest uh-huh right <laughs> right <laughs> yes right and then when he hit it again so you know it, it just worked out perfect for him and uh, yeah, he got home and he was, he's like, oh, that was the greatest. Otherwise, he's yeah. thinking, oh, I'm going to have to wait for this, you know, and pay sure. taxes on this and sure. this and that. But I don't know if that's common practice among other casinos. That's the first I've ever heard of it. First I had ever heard either. Yeah. I was shocked. He said the lady was real nice. She just says, okay. And he thinks he's getting a check for the whole amount, right? Mm-hmm. And she right. gives him eleven ninety nine, and then... And then just deducts just that from deducts the machine. that and... from the machine. Huh. Yeah. Wow. So... Anyway, that kind of goes back to I don't I don't know if that muddies the waters or clears them up as yeah, far really. as payouts, yeah. but every casino should do that. Yeah, really. Okay, well, <laughs> you know? good. This was Harris, uh, Kansas City. Harris, North Kansas, Kansas City, North yeah. Kansas City. Yeah, and by the way, he loved it. Oh, good. He said the people were wonderful, yeah. a- absolutely wonderful. There's a little difference in crafts, which we'll talk about later. Yeah, uh, but he liked it. He said it was really a, a nice place. Oh, a little older. The only he had one complaint: mm-hmm. all the rooms have double beds. All of them. All of them. Okay. That's what he was told anyway, because he tried to get king or queen size beds and they had <laughs> double beds. And he said, so, you know, he's six two. Uh-huh. And he said, so every time I stretched out, my feet are hanging way off the end of the bed. Yeah. And then my mom and dad, they're in a room with a double bed. And, you know, he's like, you know, I don't even know how they fit on the bed. <laughs> Thank God my mom's skinny. <laughs> nice. So anyway, getting back to coffee, coffee shops. shops, go ahead. What is the deal with coffee shops? Yeah, they're kind of a dying breed, at least on yeah. the strip, aren't Everything they? Everything is more upscale now. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's still, they might call it the coffee shop, but it's it's like a nicer mm-hmm. restaurant. Right, like at Caesars Palace, they had Central. I think it's closed yeah. since, but no, they, no. they had that. Uh, I think it's still there, isn't it? Well, I don't know. I'd heard that it was closed, maybe oh, since okay. you had gone. What's, and, the, what's the one by the, um, what's that restaurant there with all the plates that are stacked up on it? Central. Oh, it's open. It was open the other day when we were there. Okay. Well, maybe they are closing it. But that and like the Grand Lux over at uh, Venetian, Venetian, right? That's right. their coffee shop. So it's, right. It's, it's, it's upscale. There's yeah. no Kino. <laughs> That's the thing. I want a coffee shop where I can play Kino. Right. I can just get like basic... Bacon and eggs. Right, know, exactly. Breakfast. And that's what you want yeah. as a gambler. We want to go in the coffee shop, get something quick. Yeah. I right. want a Reuben, <laughs> a French dip, yeah, <laughs> a large Coke. No, make that a diet. Right. And then eat it and get out. Double order of hash browns. Yeah, double order of hash browns. I got a double <laughs> order of hash browns. Where was that? Was it Four Queens? It was at the Four Queens. Mm-hmm. I said, I want extra hash browns. I am not kidding. It was a mountain was of huge. hash browns. Yep. <laughs> no human can eat that many hash browns. That's all you want. You want to be able to play <laughs> Kino the whole time. Right. Well, actually, the Vegas Tripping Podcast did a whole episode on coffee shops. I think it was episode three okay. of the Vegas Tripping Podcast. So go and listen to that uh, for more coffee shop talk. But yeah, it, I, it's... I just like that old time atmosphere. And now they... They're upscale, which means service is slower. <laughs> yes. Portions are smaller. <laughs> yeah. There's no Kino. There's nothing to do but talk to your friends oh my God. while you're in there. Yeah. I mean, you can do that at home. Right. <laughs> I do miss Kino in coffee shops. Oh, me too. And you think the casino, I mean, they must have made some money on that. I guess. Thing. Of course, it's a huge house edge. But the overhead, you know, with the runners. I know, the Kino and, runner and stuff. You know, it's not a fast game. So I yeah. don't know. Just incorporate it to the waitress. Or just have it <laughs> a, a, right at the table, just have a machine, right? right? To Today with electronic yeah. stuff, mm-hmm. you'd think there'd be some machine on the table. You just yeah. punch in your thing and, yeah. and it continually draws, right? Yeah, it could be just for your table, just yeah, a regular just your, Kino machine, machine on for your, your table. table yeah. Right. 
with the little balls. They could have little balls in there that spin around. <laughs> Your own little tiny ones. <laughs> little tiny ones. And he pops out. He reset it. Start over. <laughs> Hey, Mike, remember that guy that made those counterfeit poker tournament chips in Atlantic City? At Harrah's? He was, yeah, he was staying at Harrah's, and he apparently he panicked, and he thought, I got to get rid of these chips. So he flushed them down the hotel toilet right. in, in his room, right? right, And then was subsequently caught because it clogged up the toilet. Instead of just, like, throwing them out the window. Yeah, or just in, or in some, a trash can a somewhere. Trash can or down and just a, denying he ever, you know, right, saw exactly. them. Right, exactly. Well, he's in the news again. He just pleaded guilty in – well, he pleaded guilty in September to pirating DVDs. Oh, a genius. And he was just sentenced this week to five years in federal prison and ordered to pay more than $1.1 million in restitution. Oh, this my guy, God. Chris, okay, Christian Lasardi. Yeah. That's what we should call each other when we're pissed at each other. And we think the other person's just a dumbass. Just dumb say Lasardi. Yeah, Lasardi. Nice Come move, Lasardi. La- <laughs> nice move, Lasardi. <laughs> it, it, it's going to change. Dumbass will lo- no longer be used. It'll be Lasardi. You pulled a Lasardi. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> what a riot. Well, thanks to listener Kirk, who pointed at his, this article. You know, they uh, come down hard on that bootlegging oh, yeah. DVDs. Yeah. My, my brother's in the that industry, and I mean, that's their number one thing i mean they just it used to be that they would release certain films in europe or um asia prior to the united states Mm -hmm. and just recently my brother was telling me one of the big uh, disney releases was released here first because there was so much bootlegging in eastern europe that they were afraid if they released it there that they would make copies and then sell them on the streets Mm. in america okay so yeah that's a big deal yeah All right, well, Lusardi, we'll remember that. Hey, our app is going to become free here uh, this month at some point. And uh, Miguel, one of our listeners, was asking if the bonus audio is still going to be associated with the app. So in other words, the bonus audio for previous episodes that we've already recorded, because we're not going to do any new bonus audio, will that bonus audio still be attached to the app? Um, I don't know for sure, but I'm guessing that it will be. So once the app is free, everybody can get it and, and go back and listen to some of this bonus audio. But we'll let everybody know once that comes out. I don't know that I want to go back and listen to old bonus audio. I certainly wouldn't want to because <laughs> that's just my life. Yeah, right. You know, but, you know, some <laughs> listeners might want to. I so. guess. <laughs> hey, Frank Scobletti, who is a an author, he writes a lot of books on gambling. He just sent us a copy of his new book, I Am a Dice Controller. He, or, you know, that's the name of the book. There's a lot of talk, a lot of controversy behind dice control, or some people say dice influencing. And uh, Frank Scobletti is definitely a proponent of this and and claims to have, you know, made some good money on it. Uh, you and I are not believers. No. But we're not, we're certainly not people that will argue our point because, again, you know, it's hard to argue a negative and we don't know. You yeah, know and if I, it works for you, great. Yeah. I mean, I, I think dice controlling is a much better defined term, right, than, than dice because you're just trying to control the dice so maybe seven doesn't come up as much. Well, I think the reason some people don't like dice control is because that you don't have complete control over the dice. In other right. words, okay, I'm going to roll a hard six this time. You know, you, you don't do that every time. Right. But maybe there are subtle, you know, differences in the long run, you right. know, that help you become a winning craps player. I mean, just if you could eliminate, you know, a few sevens in a night, yeah, it, could, sure. it could make a difference. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, so we're not saying that it's not possible. Right. Just seems awfully far fetched to me. But we just got the book. I'm going to read it here as soon as I can, and we'd like to have him on the show at one point. If you do want to hear an interview with him, uh, the guys over at Tipping the Odds Las Vegas podcast, Mitch and Doctor Kev, have done two interviews with him so far. He's a very pleasant guy; it makes for a very good uh, interview. Uh, but I would encourage people to go back and, and kind of listen, listen to those theirs. interviews, and then you know well, we're going to read the book and kind of see where we stand after kind of hearing from. You know, the, the thing proponents. about that is you can't really prove that. You know, even if we're at a table, let's say Frank's at a table rolling with us, if he has one really good roll, what does that mean? Oh, yeah. It's the kind of thing that has to be done over a, right. the long term. And the long yeah. term is pretty long. Right. <laughs> it, well, uh, let, for me, if, you know, let's say you and I go every weekend. Yes. Harris. And if you were able to do this and every weekend I was with you and over a year I was like, well, your roles are way better than everyone else's. <laughs> yeah. Then I th- start to think there's something to it. Yeah. But right now, you're sucked just like everyone else's. Uh-huh, right. Uh huh. Yes. So how could you know? 
Yeah, well, and like I've said, I've gone an entire year of playing craps almost every week, gone an entire year and been up for craps. Right. And there was certainly no dice influencing going on no. uh, because we were playing here in California where it translates to cards too, right? So well, it really also, is random. And also, you're not just playing on your role. Yes, exactly. You're playing right. on everybody's, everybody's yeah. role. So. Yeah. So no, it would definitely have to be something you'd look at, at the, uh, in the long run. Yeah. So, yeah. Hey, thanks to everyone who's been clicking through our Amazon link. Remember, whenever you're going to buy something through Amazon, go to our page first, youcanbetonthat.com, and click through our Amazon link at the top of the page. That way, when you make a purchase, we get a little kickback that helps cover the costs of hosting the show, and it doesn't cost you a thing. You'll pay the same price, just like normal. We got another email from listener Miguel. He wrote, I happened upon an article citing licensing agents cracking down on the people selling cold water on the Strip, usually for a buck apiece. The complaint is that the bottles are reused and filled up with tap water. I find this hard to believe since buying a three ninety nine case of 24 bottles and selling them for a buck apiece gives you a 500% profit. And trying to refill bottles seems like time wasted time which you could use to sell four or more cases out on the street. Yeah, this doesn't sound right to me. First of all, no. they'd have to get empty bottles. Well, and, and and I guess they could out of the trash. But. Yeah, but I mean, who's going to – you would know when you – if the lid wasn't – Yeah, if you, as soon as you open it and it didn't yeah. click open. You yeah, know, be, I'd be like, give me my buck back, yeah. right? I don't know. I never buy water for the, from those guys. No, so. not – you know, they're usually selling them like on a bridge on going the, from right. one casino to another. Yeah. So why not just wait to get in the casino and get a bottle of water? Yeah, right. I mean, why would you buy – I don't know. I, I guess people do. I'm sure they do. Help them out. Yeah, right. Help them out, right? It's kind of like panhandling. But I can't – you know, it just seems like – Just give them the buck, take the water, and then just chuck it. <laughs> just just <laughs> Off chuck the bridge. It. Off the bridge. Onto the, onto the street below, <laughs> yeah. hopefully catch a car. Yeah. And then and then just point at the guy. <laughs> the Look guy. what he did. He did it. <laughs> <laughs> Free night in jail. <laughs> hey, we got an email from Victor. He sent us a few questions. He wrote, it seems that one hears equally as often – don't worry about knowing the game. The dealers are glad to help you. And know the game before you come up to the table. That's proper gambling etiquette. So which is it? How does a player hit the right middle? Let's assume a craps table, not packed, but not empty. This is kind of a good question. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, sometimes you'll go up to a table, and we saw this recently, where these two women went up to the table. They didn't know what they were doing. And the instructions that they got from the dealers were just... Were terrible. Really, it was really poor. It was poor. Yeah. It was terrible. It was like, oh, do this, do that. No explanation why yeah, the, he, what you were. Just here, give me your money and put it here. Yeah, and the dealer was not like making them make bad bets. They, they, he no. was, they were telling them the right things to do. It's just there was no explanation behind it. Right. So that really doesn't help them. Now, we're assuming that they wanted to learn. Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's true too. And it didn't seem like these women were all that concerned about no, really learning. No, the I think they were the just game. concerned. Yeah. I've got 20 bucks. Where do I put it? <laughs> yeah. Kind of thing. So I don't know. I mean, my recommendation is to, you know, learn a little bit about the game before you go up to it. Now, if you're right. in a casino and there's some carnival game you've never even heard of before. Right. Then it's certainly fine to, you know, have the dealer explain it to you. Kind of depends on what kind of person you are. I mean, if we go up to a table and it's a new carnival game that we've never seen and we ask the dealer a few questions, well, we played enough cards or whatever that we we can catch on real quick. And we're going to ask right. more questions that maybe right. they won't offer the answers to unless you ask yeah, them, right. right? But if you know nothing about cards and you yeah. walk up and, you know, teach me how to play three-card poker, yeah. well, if you've never played poker, <laughs> right. it's going to be pretty hard to explain, right? Yeah, you'd have to start from the basics. Yeah, yeah you're so. right. It depends on what you are as a player and it depends on the kind of dealer that you get yeah, too. Right. You know, is sure. it somebody who's actually going to explain the game to you or kind of breeze over it yeah, or just and say, just yeah, say, put, put your, your money, money here. here? Yeah. Exactly. Another question from Victor. You got me thinking about the importance of friendly and helpful dealers. I wonder if the big six and big eight would be a good test. Walk up, put down a nickel on big six, and see if they tell you to move it. Then decide if you want to keep playing there. So just as a reminder to people, right, uh, big six and big eight at the craps table, they're terrible bets because they pay even money if, say, a six comes up before a seven. Right. But you can just place the six – and right. get a payout of seven to six. So right. you know, really so your six dollars would win seven instead of six. Yeah, 
So, you know, that is a good litmus test. Yeah, good litmus test for the dealers is put it there and see what they say. Now, I don't know that I would do that every place I go. Just, you know, I want to check out this crew. Let's see what happens. (laughs) Well, what are you going to do if you place that there and they just leave it? And, you know, so... How long do you go? <laughs> That's I mean, right. do you do you say, "Oh, wait a minute," and pick that up and run away, <laughs> and curse them out, or do you just just leave it there and? Yeah, you know. Or do you say, "Oh, hey, hey, see, I I bet here on the big six. Do you see <laughs> I'm that on the there? big six? <laughs> I'm gonna make announcement and <laughs> see, see if it calls your attention. Guy just glares at you. Yeah, good luck, sir. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't know. You know, is it the dealer's really responsibility to monitor where people bet? Well, no, but I mean, that'd be like going up. I might as well put five dollars in the field. And I says, <laughs> well, you know, that's not such a good bet, right? <laughs> that's true. But there's no comp. <laughs> bet at the table. Right. It's the field, you know, but you get some better payoff, yeah, yeah, right? right? That's the difference here. Right. I know I if I were a dealer and somebody made a big, well, if they put a dollar out there, I probably wouldn't say anything. But if they yeah. put at least $5, I'd mention something. As long as that's okay with the casino, who knows? The casino may have certain rules in place for their <laughs> right, dealers. Right, right. They might say, not want them to say anything. Well, if you see money in the big six, you just keep, you let it <laughs> stay there. <laughs> you know what was funny is, your luck, you'd be, you'd put the You'd be the dealer, right? And the uh, guy'd put five dollars. You say, "Oh, sir, there's a better bet you can make." And the guy—that's all he has—is five bucks. Right? <laughs> yeah, right. It's so- his last five dollars of his whole trip. He's down a few thousand. He's got five bucks left. Mind your own goddamn business. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Either that, or you move it up to the place six for him. Then right. you just pay him five dollars when the six hits. <laughs> there you there go. go, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Feel better. <laughs> Another question from Victor. I have often been confused about the idea of lucky seven. Why is it referred to that way in the public domain so often, given its meaning in craps and mostly no meaning anywhere else? Well, that's not really true. I think <clears throat> certainly through the through history and religion, what have right. you, the number seven has played a big role Right. In a lot of different things, you know, there are there are seven days of the week. There's seven colors in the rainbow. There are seven, seven notes. Seven on comes the up in the scale. Bible a lot of uh, so, times. Oh, tons of stuff in religion. Yeah. So you know, it's been. I think it's been considered a lucky number for a long time. Right. And, you know. Right. So the seven um, signs of the apocalypse is that it? Or it, there's a lot of biblical references. Oh, yeah, to seven being lucky and six yeah. being unlucky. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right? Yep. Yep. Uh, and then finally, Victor said. How about Mike's dad as a guest? Sounds like it'd be a treat. Yeah, it might be. I, I don't know. If we got him sitting in front of the microphone, I think he'd dummy up. Yeah, well. Even though he's so talkative. Yeah, he might not once we started talking to him and he just it forgot that be. there's a mic there. Yeah. Yeah, he'd probably just go on and on. We've tried to get him to talk with like a concealed mic. We've got like a hidden it, mic. Right. We haven't had that great success with it. Or... Well, a lot of times we've been in the car when we do yeah. it and he's in the back seat and we're in the front. But. Yeah. My dad's a talker. Oh, no question. <laughs> I mean, you know, if you if any listener ever came and met my dad, I mean, be prepared for like a good half hour. You know, you 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 have to politely walk away from him. <laughs> that's okay, right, that's right. I've got to get going. <laughs> well, we'll see. Maybe one day. Hey, you had a story from your recent trip. That oh yeah, my last Vegas about, yeah. trip. I forgot to tell this on the last podcast, yeah. and I remembered afterwards, and it's so. To me, interesting that I thought I should really mention it. Yeah. So we're at a a table. It was actually at Flamingo, I believe. And um, I'm playing with uh, two other guys who are very novice crafts players. I mean, very novice. Yeah, they really they're, don't know the game at no, all. No, and they're just starting. And I'm, I was kind of explaining to them the whole time. Uh, and they were kind of getting a little bit of a hang of it. But we weren't having such good luck on this one table. And uh, my one friend... He bought in for just a hundred dollars, and so he was down to his last. I, I believe it was three dollars. Okay. So he had three white chips left in his hand, and he had like a a five dollar bet on the line, and the point was six, and the dealer looked at him and because he didn't take odds or anything, he didn't have any more money. Yeah. Diller looked at him and saw that he had three. And this Diller was a younger guy. I mean, in his mid twenties. And, uh, he said, Oh, you're, you're all in. And my friend said, yeah, this is it. And he said, okay, give me that $3. And he took the $3 and I'm staying there and I'm thinking, okay, you know, he's going to put it on the hard way, which is what he did. But he put it on the hard six and he said, yeah, now you've got a two way hard six. 
Uh-huh. He gave him two and one for himself, the dealer, mm-hmm. without explaining to this novice who knows nothing about what a two-way hard six he just, is. He just took the money and said, okay, I'm yeah. making a two-way hard yeah. six for you. <laughs> two-way hard six for you. Uh-huh. And I, you know, started to fume. I mean, smoke's coming out of my ears at this point. Yeah, because a two-way and, bet <clears throat> means a bet for the player and a bet for the dealer. Right. So this dealer basically mm-hmm. took money and, and made a and made bet a, for himself. Made a bet for himself. And he's the funny thing is, is he's been there the whole time. He's seen the guy lose his whole hundred dollars. Uh, it's real obvious he's a novice, yeah. even though I'm helping him. Yeah. And it's also very obvious I know what I'm doing because <laughs> I bought in for two thousand and I've been, you know, making all kinds of bets. Yeah. But right in front of me, he's gonna do this. Yeah. And so I started to say something, and as I'm doing it, the person rolling rolls a hard six. Okay. So he wins his pass line bet and he got eighteen dollars for his you know bet uh-huh. and the dealers took their 10 yeah. and down yeah and i didn't say anything because i didn't want to start anything right then we played a few more hands and then eventually we're tapped out but as we were leaving i was explaining to my friend what had happened yeah and you know i oh it just burns me up because if there's one thing a dealer should never do they should never make a bet for themselves. Well, a lot of them shouldn't be hustling for tips anyway. The the, the casino has a policy where right. they can't even ask, oh, would you like to make a bet, bet for us? us. Right. And here's an example where the guy just took your friend's money right. and made a bet for himself. Yeah, and had I not been there, let's say, you know, he, he's just trying to learn the game. Yeah. I mean, he would have had no clue. He would have, like, wait, I put $3 out there and I got 18 Now, how's that work? What's yeah. it pay? Uh Stuff like that burns me up. So yeah. I don't know. What can you do? Up, for, You know what you could have done if you really wanted to was say, hey, you took my friend's money. Pay him $27. Right. Right. Yeah, That's a $3 help. bet if you really wanted to make a stink. You right. Know, it's, yeah. And I, you know, I, I don't like bad karma. I don't yeah. want to create controversy or anything, yeah. but I just kind of let it go. But I was fuming. I was, yeah. and it, you know, it didn't help that we were losing, right? For sure. If he had done that, we were winning. I'd be like, okay, yeah, give him a buck, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Anyway, just it, I had to tell that story because it just, I still bothers me. <laughs> yeah. All right. So your brother went to Harris, North Kansas City. Correct. And played craps there, of course. And he was making a fire bet and the fire bet, pay table was different there. Yeah, he actually won the fire bet right off the bat. I mean, like second shooter. How many numbers? just got there. Four numbers. Four numbers he hit. Okay. Um, Anyway, when it started to roll, he didn't ask. He just assumed regular fire bet. Although he was curious that they let you bet up to $100. $100 $100 on the fire bet. $100 on the fire bet. Wow. Guy next to him had $50 on the fire bet. Wow. 25 is the most I'd ever heard of. Yeah. And my brother wasn't really paying attention at that point. He thought it was 10. He bet 10 and $1 for the dealers. Okay. Uh huh. So he had $11 on there. It turns out the the four numbers hit. When they went to pay it, they gave my brother $440, 440. Okay, so they didn't realize So with the payout on four numbers is 40, 40 for one? 40 for one. Okay. They gave him $440 and it was, he was like looking at it and he's like, "Wow." And they were like, "Oh, it pays 40 to one." And he said, well, how did I get 440 Well, they didn't realize that that dollar was for them. They thought really? he was making an $11. Really? And it was funny because my brother said, after a while, he realized not very many people ever tipped. Uh-huh. They're at just this not Kansas used to City. it. Uh-huh. And that dealers were so unused to seeing a tip for them, especially on a fire bet. That, and then he, he gave them the 40 bucks, of course. Well, that's nice. But then he asked, and it turns out five numbers paid 250 to one. So four, wait, four numbers pays 40 for one. That's right. the highest I've ever heard. The highest I've paid. ever heard by okay. far. All right. Five numbers was 250 for one. And that's which typical. Is, which is the okay. typical. Yeah. But the six numbers is only 500 for one. Okay. So they're taking money off the top. They're taking there. money off the top, which is great because you're going to hit way more fours. Yeah, really. And, and you can go to, well, you can go up to a hundred. The guy who had fifty <laughs> won two thousand yeah. dollars on that four fire bet. Yeah, you know, I I told my brother he was like, "Oh gosh, you think I should bet more?" I'm like, "No, 
because even <laughs> even really, the four is not going to hit that. Yeah, it's often. not going to have it hit that much. Yeah. Oh, you. Know, but that is a good point. I yeah, yeah. I like that pay table better because oh, I better. mean, think of it. We've hit a six once, right? With as much as we play, you know, one time we've, we've hit, hit a fours six. hundreds of oh, times. Oh yeah, we'd be we'd have a lot more money really? in our pockets right, sure. if uh, that was the payout for the four uh, right. in the places we pay. Yeah, yeah, especially if they let you go ten or more dollars. You know, you told me this story, and it kind of got me thinking about good bets. You know, bets that have a low house edge versus bets that are more likely to win. And I remember we talked about this before. For, so, for example, the craps table, taking odds when your point is four uh-huh. is a good bet. Right. It's better. It's a better bet than a place bet on a six. Correct. Because there's no house edge on the odds. Right. But the place bet on the six is going to win more often. Pay more often. It's going to win more often, right? Right. And it's kind of like this, right? It's like, okay, so I'm not going to get paid as much on when I hit six numbers. Right. But I'm going to get paid more on the bet that wins more often for me anyway, right? Correct, right. Yeah. I wonder how pissed I would be if, like my brother, I went... Very first hand guy rolls six all six numbers. <laughs> yeah, right? you, okay. I mean, would you be <laughs> would you be stewing saying, "You put ten bucks, I got five thousand instead of ten thousand, yeah. <laughs> and you'd be like, "Oh, come on, that's a five thousand dollar difference." Or would you say, "Well, if I'm going to play here long enough, yes. I'm going to make up for it." Now, if this was your home casino, like like Harris Rincon for us, yeah. I would take this in a heartbeat. Oh yeah, because we're there all the time, right? Well, and I actually worked through the math on this too with, with the this pay table. The house edge on the fire bet there is around 15.6%, which is still a huge house edge. But the fire bet usually is a 20% house edge, right? Right, right. Yeah, Yeah, so this is just interesting. Um, He was real excited about it, of course, because all of a sudden, you know, he was up for the table for a shooter and everything. (laughs) This also got me thinking about Mark over at the 360 Vegas podcast catches some grief for not always playing max coin at a video poker machine Uh and his rationale is look the only difference between playing max coin and less than max coin is the royal flush right right and let's say it's not going to come up that much right you know it's not going to come up that much and so if i'm at a machine that's like a dollar machine i only want to play a dollar at a time i don't want to have to play five dollars every right. time just to get the right you know odds for that that right. royal flush and you know i tend to agree you know if well, you don't it's, have it's the, good money management yeah if you don't have the bankroll for it and you're still having a good time because listen mike honestly okay we don't play video poker all the time but we've played a fair amount quite a bit i have gotten a royal flush two times both times it's been on my phone for play money Playing 10 games at the same time. Right. Okay? And how many times have I gotten it? How many? A big zero. So never never have we ever hit a Royal Flush in a casino right. between the two of us. Right, right. right. Uh, so I can certainly... So again, this comes down to, you know, what's going to happen more often well, versus where, what's the, the right match? Well, I'm going to have to agree with Mark because if you're going to gamble consistently and you've got a limited bankroll... You need to do what's best for your bankroll. Yeah. And that's what's best for, well, if I hit the Royal Flush, (laughs) I want to have the most money in there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because that's probably not going to happen. But if you are going to play consistently and you're playing the max, your bankroll is going to go real quick. Yeah. Yeah. So here's the, here's kind of the bottom line. It's okay to make any kind of bet you want as long as you understand the math and are okay with it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Well, so and it's you're, like, and okay, you, I know. And you I'm, understand the consequences. Yeah, you understand the consequences. Yeah. Because exactly. the consequences are really what it boils down to, yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, whether you're putting, you know, $1 in a machine or $2,000 in a machine, if you understand the consequences of losing that, then I'm okay with you doing it. Yeah, right. <laughs> Good. Mike's, Dr. Mike's okay. I'm okay well, with you, it. You understand everything that's going on. One quick thing before we move on. I've had, I've been having some trouble with the, our Gmail account. Okay. And I, I went online. Apparently other people have this problem too, where suddenly mail that's in our inbox suddenly disappears from the inbox. Huh. Uh, I can still retrieve it. There's like this all mail folder you can go to. Right. But sometimes it'll just disappear from the inbox and, and I'll not realize that maybe I have an outstanding 
message yes. that I need to respond to. Uh, so I just bring it up in case I haven't responded to some emails that have come through. Uh, email again, and I'm I'm actually working on kind of getting around this problem so it doesn't happen again. Yeah, because you're very good about answering emails. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's move on to the Ask a Dealer segment. This turned out to be a very popular segment when we did it the first time. We have some dealer friends who have offered to anonymously answer questions for listeners. And the nice thing about the anonymity is that they don't have to worry about, you know, a pit boss uh, over their shoulder listening to how they answer a question. And, you right. know, they or can getting kinda, fired. Yeah, right. getting so they, fired can, probably... they can be real honest uh, uh, about their answers. So first, let's talk. This is a, a new dealer to the show for the Ask a Dealer segment. He's going by the name, not my 11, yo 11. Okay. Not my 11, yo, yo 11. 11. Okay. Let's go to the first question. David on Twitter wanted to know what a typical shift is like for a dealer. Hi, how's it going? Uh, I guess I'll go by the name of uh, not my 11, yo 11. Uh, I've dealt for six years at a casino, famous casino in San Diego County, and I've dealt for several uh, in-home and uh, casino uh, type of dealing companies. Uh, some of the questions you guys had, can you ask the dealers to walk us through an average shift, how long is the shift, how many games built, how many breaks? Typically, your shift is eight hours. You come in. Uh, you check with the uh, scheduler. They tell you what tables or string of tables that you're going to. You get there. Typically, some casinos are 60 minutes. Some are an hour and 20 minutes. And usually, you work 20 minutes on a table. You get tapped. You move to the next table 20 minutes. You get tapped. Move to the next table 20 minutes. And then you go on a 20-minute break. Other uh, places are 30 minutes, 30 minutes, 30 minutes take a break for another 30 minutes. So in a two-hour span, you work an hour and a half, you have a 30-minute break. Oftentimes, you have to check with the scheduler. They might say, hey, uh, poker needs help. So you're taking off the string and you're moving on to poker if you uh, deal that game. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. that's good. It sounds like they get plenty of breaks, which I know the casino wants because they want their mind clear and they want them to be fresh and stuff. Yeah, and usually they're on their feet that whole time when they're not right, on break. Yeah. Right, right. And that can, you know, you get fatigued, physically fatigued, you can make mental mistakes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And that's the last thing the casino wants is that. Yep, right? yeah. All right, uh, another question. Laura, Lauren on Twitter wanted to know how you could tell if you were in a casino where the dealers pool their tips or in a casino where each dealer keeps his or own tips, you know, without actually asking the dealer up front. How you know? Is there a way to tell? Oh, okay. Another question was, how would you know if a dealer is pulling the tips or keeping their own without asking? Good question. Oftentimes, uh, when they're taking their toke box with them, uh, as they move to the next table, go to the break, they're pretty much keeping their own tips. If the toke box stays there and on the table as they leave and go to the next table, that's pretty much you know they're pulling. Okay. Yeah, I, you I know, didn't even think about that. Yeah, but you know what's interesting when they pull? I've always been interested, and we'll have to ask this next time. How? What's the pull? Is it that shift? Is it the whole week? Mm. I've heard different things. I've asked dealers, yeah, and some say, "Oh, it's just you know our shift every night, right? Every all tables, craps, oh, blackjack, all, tables, all table games, and yeah. All, yeah, the whole casino floor. Yeah, this shift splits the tips. Yeah, right." Then I've heard other people say, oh, it doesn't matter the shift. It's just for the week. Yeah. Because you know, like it's you know, divided by how many hours you work. The person standing at the blackjack table at 7 a.m. is probably we, not going to be they, you know, right, making a lot of tips. Right. Yeah. So they do the whole week and then divide it up by hours you worked. Yeah. Which is a pretty nice way to do it, really. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure, though, if you're a good dealer and you're um, friendly, I'm sure you'd rather keep your own. Oh, yeah. You of know, because you yeah. probably make a lot more. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to another question. We're going to now hear from our dealer friend, Seven of Diamonds. Uh, the question comes from Logan. He asked about piggybacking a bet for dealers and if they prefer the bet be taken down or the bet stay up under player control. So when you make a bet for yourself and for the dealer on the, on the same wager, you can say you want it piggybacked. And that basically means that you want to keep control of their bet. So yeah. in other words, if the bet wins, you decide, uh, do they get to just keep it right now or do you parlay it or do you, you know. Yeah, increase it somewhat. Somewhat, yeah. Give them some. You have, the player has control, basically. Yeah, so let's hear from Seven of Diamonds. Hello, everybody. Seven of Diamonds here. I'm going to answer some more questions for you guys again today. 
about dealing, um, in case you didn't listen to the last podcast, I've been dealing about 10 years at a few different casinos. And I do deal craps. So first question is craps, and somebody wants to know when, they, when they're playing craps, they typically bet for the dealers on the hard ways, player control, and do the dealers like them to parlay the bet or take the bet down when it hits? Well, dealers like to go for it all, so we definitely like it when you guys parlay for us. That's awesome. If it's not hitting throughout the night and you keep doing it for us, uh, I would say press half, press half, take half. That's my preference. Some people do like to take it, take it when it hits, just take it all, but for the most part, press it. We're dealers, press it. Yeah, see, the dealers are gamblers. Yeah, right, sure. I always I always parlay their bets yeah. with mine, too. Yeah. I mean, I'm parlaying <laughs> mine. It'd be kind of silly to parlay mine and, oh, pay yourself. Yeah. Come down, you don't have a bet, and then it hits again. It would be sillier if you parlayed theirs, but then collected, collected yours. Mine. <laughs> yeah. I'm not stupid. You just keep parlaying yeah. until you know, it finally par- loses. Yeah. <laughs> right. Too bad you guys didn't win. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did okay. I did all right. Yeah, but she makes a good point, right? Maybe not parlay, but do half, half. right? Let yeah, them collect a yeah, little bit. Right. And know, I've done that. Them, Usually yeah. I've done that after a bunch haven't hit, and I feel bad. Like, I've been making these bets for them, and they're just not winning. And one does hit, I'm like, okay, you know, take it up a quarter and drop a quarter. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Lauren had a question about Martingale bettors. Those are the bettors who use the Martingale system, where you basically double your bet every time you lose until yeah. you eventually win. But, right. You know, and make your money back. So let's let's see what she says. What is the farthest you saw someone using the Martingale system go before losing it all or winning that final bet? Well, that is why the casinos have a table max. And I mostly have seen this on Baccarat. And I've actually seen somebody go all the way from starting out at $25 and doubling up, doubling up, tripling up all the way until the table max which was $5,000 at the time that I saw them doing it. And they lost that $5,000 bet, and they pulled out another 5000 and lost that one again. So I've seen it go all the way. I have seen them also get to that final bet and then hit it and make the 5000 on that last one. And I've only seen this on Blackjack and Baccarat, but it's mostly Baccarat. So ten thousand lost ten thousand dollars. Well, more than ten thousand dollars, right? 000. To win twenty five dollars, ultimately, that's right. what he was trying to do. Yeah, right. So that's well. You know what's funny about that is you do see it a lot on um, Baccarat. I mean, we've seen that a lot. Mm-hmm. You do see it on blackjack every once sure. in a while. Somebody and I've seen it on roulette. Mm-hmm, yeah. You know, with red, red and black, black yeah. right? Mm-hmm, even yeah. though it's not a fifty fifty deal. Yep. You know what was funny is this last weekend at, on the craps table. Remember that uh, lady oh, that was yes. betting the field? Yeah, she was she basically was, doing that on the field. She was basically doing a martingale system on the field. Yeah. Yeah. And that was scary. And she finally hit a winner for how much was out there when uh, she won? It, it was, was several like, thousand dollars, wasn't it? It was like two, it was a weird amount. It was like $2,010 yeah. <laughs> or something that she, she, finally, she finally hit won, and yeah. won and then went back to a $10 bet. Yep. Yeah. I mean, that's a lot of money to <laughs> put on the field. All right, here's another question from Lauren. What would you do if someone was obviously intoxicated and winning or losing betting large bets? Well, that depends. Typically, we're not supposed to say anything. Um, the casino likes people to drink. If you're drinking, you're, you're tending to play longer, bet more. They like it. And that's, in the, that's more on the beverage department. They're supposed to be the one cutting them off. But occasionally, a supervisor will tell a shift manager if it gets out of control. But you rarely see them actually pull the person off the table and stop them from betting. But I have I have seen it happen a couple times in 10 years. This is why I'm glad that our dealers are remaining anonymous. Because they, you know, if, if they're in a casino, they're not going to say, oh, yeah, the casino policy is to just get you as drunk as you possibly you can. can. Right. Because you're going to bet more and lose more. And, you know. Right. Oh, no. <laughs> casinos are very concerned about your welfare. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've actually heard pit bosses come up to, oh, sir, you've been drinking a lot mm-hmm. and your betting is a little out of control. Yeah. I think you should go back to $5 bets mm-hmm. and just relax and, and slowly get back in the groove. You of hear course. it all the time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> 
Sounds like our April Fool's episode. Yeah, again. right. That's right. It is April Fool's Day. <laughs> well, I'm recording. This I completely is... forgot. <laughs> yeah. <it's... laughs> All right. Another question from Lauren. Okay. Next question. Have you ever witnessed a thief try to steal chips from a patron's pile or your own chip tray? I've seen, not from my own tray, but I've seen players start to grab somebody else's stack. I can't say 100% that. They were going to steal them. It was more like they thought that it might have been their stack. But I have heard of people doing it. And I know for sure somebody in one of the casinos I worked at came in and reached right over the racks and grabbed a whole stack of $500 chips and ran out the front door with them. They made it out the front door. And what the casino did in defense is they took all the $500 chips off the entire floor, and anybody that was cashing out a $500 chip had to show identification. So they eventually caught the people. Yeah, I don't know that that's the smartest move. No, I've always you know? said that if I ever, you know, go and try to grab some chips and run out, I'm just going to grab a stack of fives. Yeah, well, grab them from a player. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> grab it from a player. Yeah. yeah. At the <laughs> casino. You know, um, there's a term in uh, craps called railing. Yeah. And that's where a person will stand next to you mm -hmm. and kind of reach into the rail and kind of, you know, maybe take a couple of your chips. Sure. And I've done that to you before. Yeah, oh, I know. Yeah. I've caught you. Mm -hmm. But you have to be careful with your hundreds and your five hundreds and stuff like that. Yeah. I always make sure that mine are like either near you or surrounded by other chips so it's not they're not on the end. Yeah, yeah. Right? Keep your smaller denominations on the end yeah. so somebody can rail you. It's never happened to me. But it could very easily happen, especially on a crowded table, especially a hot table. Yeah. When you're, you know, you're all excited because your hard six just hit, you're whooping up and down, you're looking out there, you could turn around and you could be out a couple hundred. That's right. Well, I don't think we've ever talked about this before. You were at a craps table once with an old girlfriend. Right. And she had her purse underneath she the table in the, the, in, in the, the shelf there. The, underneath. Right. It got stolen. It got stolen while you were playing, right? While Suddenly we were playing. she looked down and her purse wasn't, wasn't there. there. Right. Yeah. And some, you know, people had been coming up and standing near us and the table was hot. Yeah. The funny thing is she had absolutely no money in there. <laughs> yeah. She had like, a dollar something, you <laughs> yeah. know, a dollar and some change. Yeah. I had a bunch in my pocket mm -hmm. and they probably thought that, you know, maybe that she was holding my money yeah. or something. She had nothing. She found her purse. Uh, well, actually the casino found her purse the next day in a trash can in the bathroom, in yeah. the men's bathroom. Okay. So some guy grabbed it, ran in the bathroom, went through it, found nothing, threw it in there. Yeah. She wasn't at anything. It's just that by that time she'd already canceled her credit cards and all sure. that. Yeah. So big hassle. Yeah. Yeah. One final question from Lauren. Question. What is the biggest win and loss that you've seen? And what did they buy in for? Well, on craft, I've seen somebody buy in for, it was either 60 or $80 and walk away with 2500 So that's what? Around 30 times your bet? That's amazing. And then on blackjack, I had somebody buy into my table for 10000 and walk away with 300000 That's small. Um, and if you're wondering what they tipped me, they hit and tip me the entire time until the end, and they threw me 1000 So she kind of broke up there in the call. It sounded like the blackjack player bought in for 10000 and cashed out for around 300000 uh, Was it three hundred or thirty two? Well, that's not that that's not that interesting a story then. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. I didn't... It I sounded like, like 300000 Oh, 300000 yeah, well, that, so that, that is more interesting. That is but, you know, I was thinking back to the craps example she gave. Bought in for like sixty or eighty, cashed out for 2000 Well, I've got that beat, right? Because yeah, I, right. I cashed in for twenty five at Caesars Palace and cashed out for 15000 when we hit all those fours that one time. Right. So. Well, my wife, that <laughs> one trip, bought in for... I gave her $25 just that trip recently, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. And she cashed out for 2800 something like that yeah. at, the, at the end of... Uh, one shooter. That's right. Yeah. So yeah, that. <laughs> that's a pretty good deal. It can happen. I'll tell you what. If you if the guy really bought in for ten thousand, cashed out for three hundred thousand, and then left her a thousand at the end. Yeah. I don't know if that's good or bad. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, thousands dollars is a lot of money, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's two hundred seventy thousand dollar profit. Yeah. Or what? What do you buy in for? Ten? Do you say ten? Ten? Th well, that two hundred ninety thousand dollar profit. You're gonna leave a yeah. thousand bucks? Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I don't know. I've never won that much. I, oh God, I would hope it. I at least five thousand. Yeah, I mean, that'd yeah. be. I'd feel stupid leaving less than five thousand. Yep. Yep. 
Ryan on Twitter wanted to know if dealers can pick and choose which games they deal. Next question. Hierarchy of deals. Do you have to deal all the games or pick and choose poker versus roulette versus craps versus table games? You don't have to deal all the games, but it's better to deal all the games. It gives you an advantage. You are more likely to get full-time first, more hours. Um, Some houses do require that you know a certain amount of games. Poker is separate. If you deal table games, you don't deal poker for the most part. I have seen a couple casinos where they do rotate with the poker room, but that's unusual. It's mainly you either deal table games or you deal poker. And I know in Vegas, if you are a craps dealer, you pretty much only deal with craps. You're on craps every night, every night, every night. Same with roulette and same with baccarat. And then blackjack and the carnival games kind of go together. In California, for the most part, everybody moves around. You get to deal everything. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of what I figured. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, craps are a little more specialized. Yeah. So I guess once you got a good craps dealer, you probably want them on the table. Yep. Yeah. We got a call from Marty for our Ask a Dealer segment. That's another way that you can ask a dealer a question. Call our voicemail hotline at 951-292-4377. That's 951-2-WAGERS. 951-2-WAGERS. So let's hear from Marty. Hey, guys. Marty from Northern California. Found your show about six months ago, and I love it, guys. I'm a, a dice player myself. I'm probably in Vegas about about once a month. Primarily staying either downtown at the Golden Nugget and playing downtown or staying out at the Caesars property, Caesars, Planet Hollywood. So, Mike, I've probably been at the table with you at some time and didn't even know it. Uh, here's a question for your Ask the Dealer segment. I make a lot of bets for the dealers, meaning that after a point has been uh, established and the dealers hit the point, I don't really put them on the pass line, uh, usually with double odds and then working my way up to five times odds. And I do that uh, so if the table gets hot, you know, the dealers are going to make $500,000. Works pretty well. Anyway, a uh, question for the dealer is, how often does the pit boss ask them for ratings? So when I walk away from the table, does the pit boss ask them, hey, how much is this guy playing? What was his average bet? And, and what do they tell him? If they've got a player that's playing a lot for the dealers, do they take that into consideration? Thanks. Have a good day. Um, they don't ask all the time, but sometimes they do ask. And I know on craps, they ask more often because they have more players to watch if it's a busy night. So if the player is betting for us, I will always tell the supervisor if they ask me or not. I'll just let them know because they do take it into consideration. And they'll rate you higher, definitely, or a little higher at least, if you're betting for the dealers. That's a great question. And I wished they would routinely ask the the, <laughs> the uh, dealers. Yeah. For your rating, because sometimes they're watching so much stuff. And mm-hmm. I am sure, unless there's a real good reason to watch you, like you're throwing around a lot of money or something, mm-hmm. that you don't quite always get the rating you deserve. Yeah, when you maybe make a change to the way you're betting or something right. like that, yeah. they're off looking at something else. You know, a lot of tables don't have boxmen anymore, right? You know, to kind of let the pit know what's going on. And right. Yeah, and, you true. know, I mean, and you can. You could start off, I mean, you do this a lot. You'll start off with $5 bets and then you'll be winning and things are going good. And all of a sudden you've increased your, your base bet and maybe you've gone from come bets to placing numbers. And, you know, yeah. that's a much better rating. Yeah. But if the guy just has you from the beginning and he's got your rating, it, it looks like you never did anything else. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I wish they would more. Just, you yeah. know, hey, how, Just, you know, what was this guy doing? Did well, he do anything yeah. different? I had him down for, you know, $10 on the pass line and two come bets. Did he vary from that at all? Yeah, that's, oh, yeah. that's all they'd have to he, do yeah. is say, yeah, did so, he vary or, yeah. you know, and then the dealers would know better. Well, yeah, actually, when, you know, he got ahead, he started doing this, you know. Yeah, yeah. Drew on Facebook asked, how should I ask the dealer at a full ring poker game to desist from talking about religion or politics while dealing? Or should I just ask the floor to talk to that dealer? The arguments and opinions stemming from their chatter is highly distracting and irritating while trying to concentrate on the game during big money decisions. Well, that depends. Um, It depends how comfortable you feel. If you're right in the middle of a decision and the dealer's chatting away, just ask them nicely. Use their name, whatever their name is, and say, excuse me, can you please 
we finish the conversation after after this hand. And if you're not comfortable with that, yeah, just go talk to the supervisor quietly about it. No problem. They'll take care of it. Yeah, you know, um, as far as that goes, that does annoy me too. Yeah. I mean, and sometimes I've taken partake in a conversation with dealers, but it's usually when it's like me by myself or me and you and nobody else mm-hmm. on the table. Well, the I think the real key here too is it's if it's a poker game, especially right. That's quite a bit different from other games, right? Because right. at any given time, if you're in the middle of a hand, right, there's decisions that need to be made, right? right. And people don't want distractions. But um, yeah, I you know I've had that on the craps table where oh they've gotten to some talk about something. Well, I got in a good talk with one of the dealers at. Uh, Caesars the last time I was there about real estate uh-huh. <laughs> and he was telling me about his you know real estate dealings and asking what I thought about this and that and we had a good talk but the thing is it was just him and I yes yes, and it wasn't bothering me I was more than happy to talk to him about it yeah, so yeah, yeah. so you know that was okay but if there had been other people or had been in the middle of a hot roll I probably would have just clammed up yeah sure right? <laughs> yeah. yeah okay one more question and an this important was, question this was from you Dr. Mike yes this is an important question you basically wanted gossip I want some Something juicy. Yeah. I want juicy. You know how I like the juice. Sure, of course. <laughs> so, I certainly know. So let's uh, let's see what Seven has to say. One more thing. Dr. Mike asked, give me a juicy story. <laughs> um, one of them is, I'm not going to name a name, but one of the dealers I was working with was cheating on Pi Gal for the players. And what they were doing is they were... Spreading the cards so that you could see four cards, four out of the five cards, and you could just barely see that fifth card underneath and see that it was the same color, and he was paying them for a flush on the bonus and on the regular bet. And it took surveillance a while to catch on, but they finally did, and that person got fired. So that's one little juicy story for you. Um, Another one? This dealer got fired as well. They were coloring up five red chips to one green chip, so to $25. And instead of dropping $25, they were grabbing two green chips out of the rack and doing it really fast and dropping them. That person was obviously keeping their own toe, uh, and they got fired also. So there's two stories for you. I'll try and think of another good one for next time. Okay, I like so. Okay, so the dealers in with the pie gal in cahoots with the player. In cahoots with the player. The player's got like four hearts and a diamond. Right. So that's what they put in the five card hand, uh-huh. and they put the diamond right at the end. So when the the dealer reveals it for the camera. Right, it's only showing the four hearts and then just a little, a little bit of the red. red. Oh wow, wow. wow. that's good. That's <laughs> yeah. actually good. I mean, you'd have to be pretty good with cards, yes, uh-huh. to do that, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But uh, practice at home with your it, uh, right. Wow, compadre. Yeah, and that bonus payout that'd be the thing, right? Yeah, you yes, know, you right. could put some money on that bonus yeah, payout. Yeah. And I suppose, how would you do that? You'd you'd have to just hope that you got enough red cards in your hand. Well, I think probably the player would signal. Okay, this is a case where. I don't have a flush. Pretend like I do, right? Oh, I've got okay. it set up for. I, they've got to be in cahoots. Yeah, it's right. probably something they practice, right? Yeah, at home, you'd have right? to practice it. Yeah. But I mean, if you make that initial bet, let's say you, all of a sudden you know you got twenty dollars out there. Well, you don't know that you're going to get dealt enough. Well, no, you don't. But whatever. it's going to come up enough. It right? would come up a fair amount of times. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah, that's pretty juicy. I like that. I, <laughs> I like the dealer cheating for himself. Yeah. <laughs> That is stupid. Yeah. Oh, because, yeah. Because, I mean, that's, quit. you know, they're going to watch that, yeah. right? Yeah. And that's basically, it seems to me like that'd be pretty easy to catch. Yeah. 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 Right. Okay. Thank you guys uh, for all the questions. And I'm looking forward to more. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. All right. Good. Thanks again, mm-hmm. Seven. And thanks also, Yo11, for answering questions. And, mm-hmm. folks, if you've got questions for our dealers, you know, let us know. Call us, email us, Twitter, Facebook, you know, yeah. however you can get the yeah, questions Yeah, you know, a us. lot of them seem to be craps oriented, but, you know, these guys, they deal everything. Yes. So anyone who's got a Baccarat question or a three-card poker question yep. or yep. roulette question, they've dealt it all. Yep. So, yeah, and uh, 
I like their answers. Yeah, this has been a, a very fun segment. I uh, definitely enjoy it. Okay, that's going to do it for this episode. Be sure to check out our TV listings showing all the gambling-related shows coming up within the next two weeks. I update those listings every Wednesday using a program I wrote myself to search through all the raw American TV data. Just go to our webpage, youcanbetonthat.com, and click on the link at the top that says TV listings. And you know what's on this week, Mike, that's not on very often? Let It Ride, the movie with Richard Dreyfuss. Oh, that's a great movie. And I was looking through the listings. They gave it one and a half stars out of four. Are you kidding yeah. me? Yeah, see, isn't that terrible? It well, didn't, that's terrible. It didn't do now, well in the theater. No, I understand the that. Know, I but, understand that. And, and you could say that the acting is, you know, not that great yeah. and everything. But Terry Gar is in the movie, okay? <laughs> I want to stress that. Terry Gar is in the movie. Oh, I love that She's movie. She's as cute as can be. <laughs> I'm not a big Richard Dreyfuss fan. But he's good but in that he's role. he's good in that role. It's the perfect role yeah, for him. It really is. And it's such a good movie. Movie. And you don't have to know anything about horse racing. No. I mean, it's just a fun movie. It's fun. And Terry Gar's in it. Did yeah, I mention I, that? I think you did. Yeah. Well, just <laughs> emphasize. Hey, we'd love to hear from you. Call our voicemail hotline at 951 292 4377. That's 951 2 Wagers. Or you can email us at you can bet on that at gmail.com. Also, follow us on Twitter at You Can Bet On That. We always tweet when we're in a casino or on our way to a casino, and we'd love to meet up with you. And you know, this week, we're going to be going to Harrah's Southern California on Friday night, like okay. we usually do. Right. And my sister has asked us to teach craps to some of her friends. Oh, so we'll nice. just we'll just make a whole craps tutorial out of it. Which, so uh, anybody who wants to come... Uh, Mina said Harris will teach this? you. This is Sue okay. and her friends, right? Okay. So, yep. All right. So we'll, well just open that up to, to the public. We're going to have to get an empty table or something. Yeah, may, we might be able to pull some strings. <laughs> get, get a table and teach some crafts. <laughs> like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash you can bet on that. And finally, head on over to iTunes and write a review on us. When you do, it helps us get new listeners, supposedly. Mike. I just got one thing to say about teaching crafts. I know exactly how this is going to go. All right. They're going to win. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yes. You and I are going to get hammered because uh-huh. yeah. we're not doing what we teach. That's right. We won't lose a little. We'll lose a lot. We'll lose a lot. Mm-hmm. And we'll go home depressed. Yeah. And then the whole way home, it'll just be blah, 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 blah. Oh, I know what that blah, 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 blah is like. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Always fun. Always fun. All right. Thanks for listening. Good night. Good night.